think I got enough here for breakfast. Uh, I don't want to pick too many since it's pretty early in the season, just to let them get uh, as big and as bountiful as possible. But these will make some delicious blueberry pancakes. Come on, Lando, let's go make breakfast. So yesterday I took a little hand sander and I sanded this little piece here to see uh, what the wood looked like underneath and to see if I could get most of this paint off, um, which worked out totally well. It seems like the wood's still in pretty good uh, condition for how old it is. There's a few pieces like the top cross pieces that uh, are a little bit worse. Um, they're probably a lower quality of wood, but all in all, I think it should be pretty easy to to uh, get looking nicer. Um, 
So yeah, I think I'll take the power sander because the hand sander took quite a while. Um, and since there's some of this really rough stuff, the power sander is gonna help get through that a lot faster. And then I'll go in with a lower grade uh, hand sander to do the finishing touches to get it nice and smooth. And then um, I'm gonna try and replace this handle. I think this thing had a foot pedal back in the day, uh, something you could press down and it'd spin the wheel, something you could use both hands while grinding. But um, that mechanism is gone now. So it's basically a block of wood with a rusty nail sticking out of it. So if I can make anything better than this, just something that's not giving you blisters the whole time you're turning it, then uh, that will be a win. It'll be nice to see this thing uh, all fixed up because it's such a cool antique piece that's been up here forever. And like some of you know, and for those of you that don't know, uh, I've always been interested in blacksmithing and forging. And that's something that's one of my dreams up here is to someday get a forge. So a grindstone like this will definitely be a necessary component to that. All right, so some of you guys were wondering about the electrical wiring in this place. So I thought I'd just kind of give you a quick look. Um, I don't know much about how this place was wired since it was done back in the 50s, but I can say that it's quite old. It's got many, many power ports throughout all the cabin, obviously, it, with it being a workshop, including this one that's kind of hanging uh, from the center pole here, which is what I use when I'm running extension cords to outside because unfortunately there isn't a power port outside as of yet. That would be something I'd like to add. But uh, I think I would like to redo all of this wiring in the future anyways, um, because with it being old and lots of these power plugs not even working, uh, first of all, it's a fire hazard. Um, so I don't have the electrical plugged in unless I need it. But also with it being old, uh, it takes a lot of power. And since we're running off of solar and batteries here, uh, power needs to be conserved as much as possible. And old wiring like this just has a lot of parasitic draws and just unnecessary draws. So it really isn't uh, efficient. So yeah, at some point I'd like to get a whole, all new wiring in here, but uh, for now this is what uh, I have to use. Good to go. Just we'll need some safety glasses and a mask. That sands up quite nicely. Alright, so that uh, was a pretty long process. As you've probably noticed, there's still some of that red paint color on the insides and on the box at the bottom. But uh, halfway through, I kind of decided that I liked that look a little bit. And uh, realized that if I fully sand down the entire thing, stain it, shellac it, it won't really look like the um, 
restored project I had in mind. It'll look more like a new uh, object. And if I'm going for that look, I might as well just have built a new base. So I, I really want it to look still um, somewhat antique. So my idea is that if I leave some of that paint and it's more of a faded paint color now and on the inside, then it does kind of leave more of that restored antique look rather than a uh, brand new one. So uh, I think that even without staining, just shellacking this uh, with a couple layers of shellac to weatherproof it, and then shellacking over the paint as well will kind of give it a pretty neat look. So I might do a few finishing touches. I still need to uh, figure out how to work on the handle. But like I was saying, uh, the sanding process actually took a lot longer than I was expecting. So I might move this inside, put a tarp down or something, and then start uh, the shellacking process. Okay, buddy, just me swimming. Wow, this uh, shellac really looks nice. Um, it looks a lot better than I was expecting it, uh, especially with a bit of that red paint here and kind of accented through it so you can see that it was sanded down from an original color. Uh, I think it gives it a really neat look and also the darkness of the shellac. Um, it just darkens the wood a little bit to kind of look more natural because obviously with it being freshly sanded it shows up a lot more white. Alright, so I've shellacked one of the sides uh, just with one light coat and uh, it already looks so much better and just to show you that, I'll flip it around so you can see what the other side looks like. I'll continue shellacking until all of it has one coat and then I'll let it dry and then uh, continue the process multiple times until it's... Uh, Good and thick. Alright, so this is about the third layer I put on. And it looks pretty good as is. Uh, it's definitely weatherproof by now. Um, but I'm going to let this sit outside now. Uh, just so that it dries a bit faster. Maybe do one more coat and then it should be good to go.
there's an old uh, horseshoe in this pile. Not exactly sure how this got on the island, but uh, it's an old tradition. You can see on some of the other cabins on this island, including our family cabin, that uh, they sometimes have horseshoes hanging above the doors. I'm not exactly sure where the tradition started or what it means, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's just like a good luck symbol or well, it keeps bad spirits out or something. But uh, it's a pretty cool tradition, so I might hang this one up a bit later. All right, so I decided to hang the horseshoe uh, inside right above the door into my room because uh, in our old cabin, uh, the bedrooms always had one. And uh, outside, the light right above the door kind of blocks it from being in the center. So I think this would be the best spot, but I have here a little bit more information on uh, the whole horseshoe thing. And it basically says that, uh, like the most common belief is that if you have a horseshoe hung over a doorway, uh, with the ends up, like this, then it catches good luck, I guess, and yeah, it just catches good luck. And then if it's hung with the ends down, uh, the good luck will spill over uh, and the door will stop evil from entering. But uh, the Irish believed back in the day that having a horseshoe above your door would ward off witches or I guess any evil spirits because as the old uh, tale goes apparently back in the day a blacksmith put a red hot horseshoe and nailed it to the devil's hoof and apparently the pain was so unbearable that uh, just the sight of any horseshoe keeps the devil away to this day but uh, superstitions aside it's just a cool tradition and uh, yeah might as well keep it going. Alright, so I kept uh, postponing this project for a long time because I really didn't want to uh, do the wrong thing. I wanted to take the time and think about what I really wanted out of these chairs. And I think I finally come to the conclusion that I don't want to do anything fancy with these. I was sitting there looking at them while I was picking blueberries this morning and I really liked the rugged look and the, the craftsmen that made them and left them here, uh, left them how they were. So I think I'll do the same. I'm just going to lightly sand them and then uh, stain them with the same shellac that uh, looked really nice on the grindstone. That way uh, most of like the rough edges, so anything that might give you a splinter or something is gone, but the chisel marks and stuff are still left there, which is I think a pretty uh, neat sign of just craftsmanship and stuff. And also since they're sitting with this barrel, I think uh, just the rugged rustic look is what I'm going to go for. So uh, I know you guys probably don't want to see much more sanding, uh, so I'll probably start this one and then just zip it to the end and then uh, start shellacking these. I think they're going to look really nice, especially just with that kind of darker shellac color and then the rusty barrel. Yeah, I think it'll look pretty good. are just as heavy as ever. I 
not sure if you can see, but there's some of the grooves. I think it's a pretty neat look. Alrighty, so I got the sanding process finished and then took the chisel and just kind of cleared up some of the fuzz. Just a rough sand, uh, I think leaving some of the, uh, I don't know what the word would be, like the weathered wood on will give it a kind of cool marbled look. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Put on the first coat of uh, shellac. I might stain these, but I think I'll do a little spot of shellac and see how it looks and decide from there. Alright guys, so as you can see, I got uh, both of the chairs sanded down. Just a nice light sand to get every uh, little hair off and anything that might cause a splinter. And then to get some of the, the more splintery pieces of wood in the seam, I just got a wood chisel and chiseled a few pieces out. But um, I got this chair here with one coat of shellac completely covering the entire chair but uh, I actually ran out of shellac. So I won't be able to put any on this one yet, and uh, I won't be able to do second and third coats quite yet. But so far, uh, even with one coat, it looks really nice. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The it, kind of dark golden color that this turned into matches really nice and kind of blends more in with the wall, which is exactly what I was going for. So couldn't be happier. And also the way that uh, leaving those chisel marks and chainsaw marks in the log, um, it kind of gave like a, a ripple effect of lighter and darker colors, which looks really neat. And it's just gonna look better and better with uh, more and more coats with that shine. All right guys, thanks for watching. Uh, that was a pretty eventful video. We got a lot of the projects that I've been talking about for a while now done. Uh, I'll finish up these ones in a little bit once I get some more shellac and I think they'll look really nice on the outside. And that grindstone, uh, I decided to leave it without a new handle just while I'm not using it, the old handle kind of keeps it looking antique. And right now, since it's not in use, it's uh, more of a decoration for the outside of the cabin. So I think it looks nice the way it is. But uh, when I get a forge at some point and I need to start using that, then I'll definitely fit uh, some better handle for it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. You guys seem to be enjoying the videos, which is great because I love making them and uh, sharing with you all my projects and kind of what I'm doing. So thank you for watching, thank you for leaving comments, and a big thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my Patreon channel, that really helps. But uh, yeah, I'll keep plugging away, and uh, see you in a bit.